What's going on, Uber Dog Man Dan here? Need for Speed Payback. Now, you've seen me recently posting a whole bunch of videos on this, and I've got a whole bunch more to still post. But this time, I thought I'd add a little commentary in here. So, first, um, what we're doing in here is going to pick up the new police interceptor abandoned vehicle that's been placed in game. This is actually like the first abandoned vehicle I'm, I'm actually going to go and get since I just started uh, like a couple weeks ago. Uh, I know I've had a chances to pick up a couple others, uh, but this is the first one I, I'm, I'm running around to go and get, basically. Uh, I'm also using my, my Audi S5 that I recently spent a little extra time customizing. Uh, so now you get to see a little bit of it. It's coming up in one of the uh, bigger missions that I, I was doing while I'm leveling up, so we'll have some more footage on this awesome Audi, but um, we're going to get this police interceptor and uh, we're going to get back over to RAV and get it in my uh, garage so I have it permanently, which is going to be a fun challenge in and of itself. Anyway, Need for Speed Payback. So just a little bit about it. Um, you know, with all the past Need for Speeds of the past couple of years, I was not thrilled with the way things had been going so I didn't pick this game up right away when it came out last November and there's been a whole bunch of different things that have gone on with it you know you can talk about the good the bad and everything but we're looking at it from the situation we just picking it up now the only reason that I really picked it up now was I was craving a racing game within this past couple well, for a while right I've been craving this it went on sale because of E3 so I picked up the base game um, at 50% off and I am completely addicted to this game now it's got a great feel to it um, uh, it feels more reminiscent of, of some of the past better need for speeds in terms of controls for the cars in terms of just how it plays um, the open world thing is awesome of course you know customization is insanely crazy it is a massive car PG, if you will, you know, with the story missions and everything, but you have all the different things that you can do in the game itself when you're doing speed jump or speed runs and jumps and breaking billboards and all these different things that you're doing in the game and all those things help you open up more customization stuff uh, within your garage within your shop so you can really spend more time on your cars if you will now this car here like the abandoned car um, you can't actually do anything special to it in terms of upgrading visuals or um, upgrading uh, parts to it uh, which is fine um, because you're picking up an abandoned car you know it is what it is and this one being a police interceptor yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want the, the Ford Interceptor? It's one of those cars you've always wanted in all the different Need for Speeds, right? It's that, that classic car that everybody wants. Sirens work on it. It's just insane. Um, but now I'm getting farther and farther into the game, and I, it just it just becoming more and more fun. Like I said, uh, I've spent a little bit of time doing some customization, and I'm going to do a lot more customization on the different cars uh, as I get more things unlocked. Um, as you get more shipments from leveling things up you get more free things in terms of like uh, smokes and tents and underglows and parts and you name it you can get all these different things yeah the downside also is there is a whole bunch of areas where you can spend a lot of extra money um, in terms of what we would I guess you could say is loot boxes but you're basically picking up um, like you can pick up shipments, you can buy shipments with cash, if you will. No big deal to me because I'm not that type of person that's going to go ahead and do that. Uh, they've got a whole bunch of DLC vehicles that are in game. Um, a whole bunch of new ones that just released. You know, maybe down the road if I see them at 75% off or something and I'm in interested in a couple of them, I may pick some of them up just because there's some pretty nice ones, but. Uh, overall, there is plenty in the game. As you complete your storylines, your quest lines, um, you uh, unlock more cars that you can purchase in the different uh, varieties of shops. The runner shop, the off-road shop, the drag race shop, the drift car shop. So you can pick up a whole bunch more. There's 
There's a ton of garages that you can buy, so you have storage space for your cars. You can um, you can create a custom look and then upload it to the community, and other people can download it. Like I did it with the uh, my Buick Grand National I picked up. I I downloaded that one uh, vehicle skin. I've customized it a little bit extra beyond um, downloading the skin, which you can do as well. But that's pretty awesome. So you can find skins that you may like that somebody else has created and uh, use them. But overall, I'm just I'm just liking the game now. I mean, it's not like the early days and everybody you know years ago we all re remember Need for Speed World where it's a completely open world with you know 50 people in in the open world at the same time as you. That's that's just not bad. There's there's like still the whole maximum of like eight people in the world with you, but you can race against those people. Uh, you can find them easily just by looking on the map. So there's a ton of stuff going on. In terms of this versus the Crew 2 or the Crew, I mean, I've played many, 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 many hours of the Crew. Um, I've played <clears throat> the different betas, the alpha, the closed alpha, the closed beta, and whatnot of the Crew 2, and it's okay. Um, but I did not find the need to want to spend a, the full price again on that game on the crew 2 it just doesn't seem like a full price game to me so i'll wait a while for it to come out get some of the bugs that were in it fixed all that jazz but for now i've got this one and honestly if you get a chance to get in this game it is it is quite awesome um so if you have the budget and you're interested i think you're gonna find that this is definitely on the lines of the classics that you like driving is awesome and um the different things that you can and can't do is going to keep you busy. But, uh, yeah, anyway, that's just some quick thoughts on it. Definitely I want to have a lot more. I want to talk about automatics versus uh, stick shifts uh, or manual, if you will, the different types of cars at different types of events. We'll get more more and more detail along with, uh, obviously, doing the storyline videos where I'm just letting the little mini storyline go so you can understand some of the different things going on. Um it's a little different having the full storyline in there, but got kind of used to it. That's how car RPGs are working these days. I'll catch you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, go get this car if you have the game while it's still here.